Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at a big chunk of manga from Seven Seas Entertainment. This is Homunculus by Hideo Yamamoto. Uh, I've not seen anything else by Hideo Yamamoto. I see that he is attached to Ichi the Killer, which is a property I've heard of, but I've never seen. Uh, but immediately upon looking at the art for this, I had to get it and immediately upon starting reading it, I uh, really fell in love with him as an artist uh, and <laughs> am hoping that this book sells well and that translations of the rest of his work come over into English because this is a fantastic comic. Um, it's something that I wish I had the time to do. It's a story that you don't even really know what it's about until like halfway through or further th through this big chunk of a book. But every step of the way, uh, the artist keeps you kind of sucked into what's going on. So at first it just seems like it's this story about this guy living out of his car, but there's such strangeness to the story and such interesting dialogue and beautiful art and stuff like that, that it doesn't really matter that I don't know what it's all about. You know, there's like this whole page here, which is this guy shooing these crows away. Taking the time to set atmosphere like that is something that Japanese just do so well. And uh, we just don't have the space for this kind of decompressed storytelling in the way our industry works, I don't think. Um, and I would really like to see that change, I, I think. You know, I personally, I wish I had the time to do a book like this. Anyways, uh, here you have just they're kind of sitting around talking. I really like this line of dialogue. After all, we humans can be even more mechanical than machines these days. If you think of a machine and as a machine you're making a big mistake and I think that's a really interesting idea there so you're starting to get a sense that this story does have something to do with psychology a bit here you start to get an introduction to what's really maybe going on in the story which is you have this character come in and offer to this guy living out of the car uh, that he wants to trepanate him he wants to drill a small hole in his head the idea being that if you release the pressure here, you don't drill all the way through, you just release some pressure on the skull and it gives the brain a little bit more room to breathe is kind of how it's explained in the book. And uh, that opens up mental abilities. So you start to get the sense that we're headed towards someone getting some kind of special mental abilities. But at, at this point, actually, really, you still just kind of thinking like that this might... And sorry for all the spoilers. I have to go through this book with spoilers. Uh, I should have said that from the beginning. But you, you get the sense that, you know, this character is too rich and bored and that they're up to some kind of maniacal plan there. But you don't know what it is. Um, beautiful picture here. Here's the park that the homeless people live in and then here's this very wealthy building that he either used to work in or live in, I, I forget. Um, and then this big street between and this character saying, a guy like you perfectly sandwiched between the two while you're just perfect because this main character lives in a car parked against the street here uh, on the other side by the park. So beautiful image. I mean, God, what a drawing that is. And then also just metaphorically, like what a cool, cool image and cool piece of writing. So I already by this point, I'm totally sold on this book, a hundred percent sold, but I like still think it's pretty much just a it's slightly surreal drama. Uh, you, you start to learn about these characters. This character is Ito Manu, Mana, Manabu, Manabu, Manabu. Uh, Ito Manabu is the son of a famous neurosurgeon and someone who has like picked up a lot of his dad's skills without uh, necessarily getting a degree or anything and has had a lot of money and wants to experiment with this idea of trepanation. And then here you finally learn this character's name, which is Nakoshi Susuma. So Nakoshi is the main character and initially is of course like, no, I don't want you to drill a hole in my head, but eventually, uh, you know, doesn't really have much of a choice. There's some s circumstances that push him into doing it. Just some amazing art here of the trepanation procedure 
and going into this more like photorealistic drawing it reminds me of like uh akagami a little bit you know his work in the like sanctuary and things like that uh really beautiful unsettling just amazing drawing completely unsettling imagery there and you get a sense that okay this is heading towards like at least thriller if not horror itself uh, as the book evolves, you realize now we actually are getting into like psychological, surreal psychological horror thriller. So the trepanation has indeed given the main character some some kind of superpower or vision into another world. So here you see this like pretty like chunky guy here walking by, and when he goes by the side, the main character sees him. Uh, as someone who's basically just like a paper thin cardboard cutout. So you don't know what's going on yet, but it's like, well, he's either seeing monsters that are like in between or he's hallucinating or there's something going on. But obviously as a result of the, the trepanation uh, and you just get all of these strange creatures and the drawings are, you know, I, this is something Japan does a lot better. They really do monsters and unsettling a lot better than we do. Like this person split in half holding their own hand. It's just also inventive. Uh, this guy with the fish head. I love here also this zoom in on the artwork to the point where it's all pixelated and funky looking. It just brings out like the horror. It feels like a shout out to old EC comics. Um, not that EC Comics actually were drawn like that, but the, in reproduction, that's kind of what they looked like. And so I think zooming in and making everything thick and kind of poorly reproduced recaptures that sense of the funky old EC Comics. And I, I think the artist is paying tribute to that a little bit. And the, the roughness of it just kind of adds some intensity to it as well. You know, here's a tree person. So you're just getting all of these strange uh, characters. And... Here we start to finally learn what's going on. The character starts to get an idea of what's going on with his, his powers here when he's confronting this mob boss. And the mob boss looks like a transformer with this like blade that's cutting off its own pinky. And uh, this mob boss is always cutting off people's pinkies. And uh, so the, he's like starting to figure out that what's going on is he's seen some kind of like representation of the person that's giving him insight into who they are and he's going back now and reporting reporting that to ito uh just had to point out i love that drawing love that image love the texture they put in there he's also uh telling ito that like some people look normal you they look the same and other people oh no what's going on with this image too besides it being a good drawing is Ito's now asked, because they're figuring out that uh, what ha is happening is that what the main character is seeing is the person's psychological representation of their own damage. And uh, then this character asks Nakoshi, Ito says, uh, what do I look like to you? And Nakoshi says, you look exactly the same, but really is not seeing anything. So that's giving you a sense of this character uh, is that, you know, kind of what their what their damage is is they're just a void. They're they're some, trying to fill something. Um, so that's what's going on here, and that's why it's called homunculus. Is they explain? I don't know if I put a tag on it, but they explain that the homunculus is a mental representation of someone's body, and that what the, what the, is being seen here by uh, Nakayoshi is that they're seeing a homunculus representing the person's kind of psychological state. And if someone has psychological issues, then he will see the monster that represents, or the form that represents those issues, which I think is a fascinating idea. And immediately, as soon as I understood that, asked Tori, I said, hey, what would yours look like? And what would mine look like? And we did some drawings of them. And that was actually a really kind of helpful, like therapeutic thing to think about. So I would encourage everyone to think about, you know, like if you do have anything that you're still working on, how would you visualize that as, as a character? Uh, and then just, I mean, here he's going into like the brain. So there's all these kind of in, interior kind of emotional representations of synapses, synapses firing. And uh, it's just cool, cool imagery all throughout. There's some funny stuff in here too. Like here's a scene where this big mob boss guy now 
this character is smelling him. Um, he's he's seen this robot again, but there's some smell. He's he's trying to find out where the smell is coming from. And then you know one of one of this Yakuza Zabasa's guys come in here, and it looks like he's getting a blowy. And it's, you know, so it just makes for a funny scenario as well. So the ability of the author to swerve between like intense, just dramatic situations with like some real life wisdom in them, uh, the psychological thriller, the the surreal horror, the comedy, it's just a lot to juggle and juggle successfully and it's juggled completely successfully and then it's, you know, put together with this just stunning art. Here you get finally the mob boss has basically the the main Nakayoshi has confronted him and used his ability to see what he's built for himself uh, to tear the boss down. So really the boss is like this scared young boy who has built himself this gigantic, scary robot thing uh, and then cutting off everyone's pinkies. But once you solve that core damage, then the boss kind of falls apart. And here's the visual representation of him being stripped of his protective suit and put back to the scared boy. And uh, that's just a powerful image. And that makes me really excited about what the rest of this series looks like, you know. Uh, that the conceit is interesting and then I think the artist is nailing I don't think you could land the conceit any better visually than than it is in this book the also here like where he's going to cut off his pinky the willingness to distort the pinky and make it bigger you know you hear about like uh, therapists will have kids draw family members and if dad's hands are too big you know the head's supposed to be big if the hand's big then it's a sign that maybe someone's being abused you know because that's what the kids focused on so those psychological distortions of size and proportion where they're taking on the the well, not even the, the hierarchical scale but yeah just the emotional scale is really interesting so here this big swollen pinky again it's just a cool visual and the texture that's put in here is really interesting as well so it's just again you know landing these impressively symbolic images with this and surreal with when it's just intense black and white realism is a beautiful beautiful looking thing the intensity of expression here i know some people don't like the melodramatic expressions in manga but uh, I think compared to the kind of expressiveness of American artists and European artists, just the Japanese outpace us so, for, for the most part are so much better. Um, the pain in these images is so good. And the, the drawing over here is so good. The scratched out tones on each of these tiles. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely masterful stuff. Here's where they actually talk about the homunculus for the first time. So here they're saying the homunculus is basically just a this, and I've seen this before, it's been a long time, so this book kind of reminded me of it. But the, this idea of the homunculus, this drawing that they're drawing here, is basically if we gave the, the body the same proportions uh, that these things take up in the brain. So like lips and hands have a lot of nerve endings and so there's more area of the brain devoted to processing those sensations and that's why in the homunculus they're represented as bigger because they're proportional to the, the neurons in the brain rather than the body. And so what they're saying is that um, this is a physical representation and what the main character is seeing are psychological representations. And, you know, again, that's just a fascinating idea. This drawing of this ostrich here is just, ooh, the brushwork in those feathers, the ink slinging right there is amazing. If you just enjoy ink slinging, this is a book you got to get to, but besides the cool story. And then, if that's not cool enough, then there start to be these really innovative effects now where this Ito character isn't just 100% see-through anymore. He's starting to form, but it's like he's a distorted mirror that everything's coming, re getting refracted through. I have no idea how they're pulling this effect off. I'm assuming this is just some effect in Photoshop where they're getting like a 3D model of the character and then using as a, a, a displacement map or something, but it looks so cool. It's a little bit hard to parse at times, but that's correct. You know, that it's it, it looks like a, in the Predator, you know, when you see him just distorting the background, but figured out how to do that black and white. This reminds me kind of of um, some of what Ennio Sanya was doing with like, with 
invisible suits and stuff, but I think it's actually, the, the effect works better here. Asanyo has the tendency to get a little too cluttered. Um, this is just cluttered enough to be strange and compelling, but still read. So love that, and that effect continues. And so when you know that this, this artist is coming up with all of these different textural effects, all of these different computer effects for each each kind of new um, damaged person that he's encountering and trying to figure out what their psychological problem that needs help solving is, uh, you get all of these just kind of innovations with the mark making from the artist. Like here you can see there's this girl, this is kind of the second big character they take on, boss or whatever, I don't know, besides the Yakuza boss, is this girl who's just made of sand. Um, and you see her here sitting next to the Edo character. And so it's just so exciting because it's like, oh man, each new storyline, I'm going to see this artist innovate some kind of new textural approach or some kind of new technological approach. And they're all visually as compelling as can be. So I'm so stoked on this series. Uh, it's really cool that it's coming out in these big chunks like this. I think especially because it does take so long for the you know actual like you, you know you're like this far in before you're even learning about a homunculus and that's you know that's this far into the book before you finally get an explanation of the title and uh so i think it's good that they're releasing it in these big chunks like this that said uh i could have got through volume one and st still been like oh hell yeah i'm buying more of this book so this is a really cool uh manga it's just another one of these ones that have been coming over in the last few years that i just making me really rethink everything I know about comic storytelling um, and the, how sophisticated I assume comics were versus how sophisticated actually they, they really can be. So huge fan of Hideo Yamamoto. Hope that we get a full Hideo Yamamoto library translated at some point, whether it be Seven Seas or other people. But Seven Seas did a great job with this. Um, super intense kind of production tasks that they would have to capture a lot of these details and effects that Hideo Yamamoto is doing and it's it's re reprinted perfectly it looks beautiful so all together an amazing package as long as the uh, binding here holds up on the side which after one read it has uh, this is a pretty flawless comic and I can't wait for volume to definitely 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 go get this for yourself if you enjoy the channel, you enjoy what we're doing here, and you'd like to support us, there's two ways to do that. The first way is through our Patreon. On Patreon, we have two different tiers of engagement. At the first tier, you just get early access to the videos. At the second tier, you can get exclusive previews of the graphic novels that Sean and I are drawing, as well as the ability to participate in our ongoing webcomic experiment, Prane Day. You can vote and help control what happens in that story by participating in our Patreon. Uh, we really appreciate all that support. Any money that we get from the Patreon just goes back into other creators and other publishers' pockets because that's what we use to help. Well, not all of it, but it helps buy the books that get reviewed on the channel. So that's much appreciated. It helps keep this whole thing rolling. Uh, and then if you want to support Living the Line itself, the best thing to do is support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we will go ahead and take a look at one of those books that you can buy now. Whole new world. Whole new world. Please, so Carson can finish reading his books and let me go home. <laughs>